All right, hi everyone. I'm here with Michelle Rudolphy. She's gonna be talking about how she basically went from a thousand a month was a good month for you. You typically made around 500 to a thousand a month to where she actually got six clients in a span of a month, made around $7,500 in sales and collected $5,000 in cash that month within just the first few months of us working together. Right, Michelle? It was those first few months of working yeah, together. For sure. Yeah. And I think we also wanted to touch about touch on about how Michelle is actually a mother as well. And she was building this business while she was uh, while she has kids. I know for a lot of moms, it can be a little bit like, how am I able to still balance my family life while mm -hmm. wanting to build a business? And I thought it'd be so wonderful to have Michelle come on here and talk to us a little bit about that. So we're going to be talking about that later. But first, Michelle, if you could kind of just start us off with telling us what your niche is. Sure. Um, so before you, before the training, I thought I had it hammered out, but it was, um, it was still a little bit too broad. And so I couldn't speak to my niche. I was um, just trying I remember in trying to develop my niche, you, you kept saying, you're, you're just saying you try to get people healthy. Oh, I remember and, this. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, yes, that's exactly what the problem was. I was still kind of accepting anyone, mm -hmm. um, but wanting, pref um, preferentially, I wanted females, but it was just like, I want females to get healthy. Right. So um, though I thought I had narrowed down my niche, I really hadn't until um, going through your training and your worksheets, um, really digging deep into that. Even that first module, it was like, I mean, mind <laughs> bombs, you know, like just okay. going off. Um, so right away, I knew that this training was something different and going to be so worth it. And so now my niche is, it is women looking to lose weight and increase their energy. Oh, wow. And um, because it's nothing fancy. I know it's, it's, I've narrowed it down. It is so much easier to speak their language yeah. and market myself and be confident in what I'm saying and knowing that I can help them, you know? I think so, so too. I, I think this is such a common mistake that we make because we're like, we want to help people get healthy. So we basically create marketing around helping people get healthy. And then we're like, why can't I attract clients? Right? Yeah. And I like to say it's like what we've done is essentially we've set out some oatmeal that's just plain oatmeal. Right? Yeah. And we're like, why don't people want the oatmeal? You know? Uh, right. Nobody, it's not, like getting healthy is not sexy enough. Right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And so when I, I think that's what allowed you to get those six clients in a month is because you really honed in. We figured out what exactly because that's what they ultimately wanted right you found yeah. out that that's what the type of clients that you were working with actually wanted we just weren't mm -hmm. saying it right right that's great very true yeah so now if you could talk to us a little bit about kind of when before we started working together right mm -hmm. where you know kind of what stage were you at with your business can you talk about what that looked like a little bit more yeah. Um, before we started working together, I was just, I wasn't lost, but I didn't have any type of mapped out strategy. I knew that I needed to like increase my presence. And so because of COVID, you know, I knew that the best way was to increase my presence online. Um, but I had, I mean, I had no idea how to do that through Instagram or Facebook. Like I just, those have never been my thing. Um, yeah. So I just, I was basically just sitting around waiting for people to contact me. You know, I had my name <laughs> sure. on health props. Yeah. And was just right. like, okay, I've got a website and I'm on health props. So people should find me. Right. And, yeah. um, so I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't very proactive at all. Um, yeah, I was, I was pretty lost actually. Sure. Um, I think yeah. that, I think, I mean, I remember when I started my business too, I had a similar mindset. I was like, I need my website to look nice. I need to have a logo, right? Check and check, yeah. <laughs> and then I always talk about how I got the business cards. Those were the three things I thought yes. were going to 
And even my background was in marketing, so I should have known better. But I, for some reason, I think when we start a business, we think that that's the checklist, right? Yeah, exactly. And I had those tools and I was I was ready for the explosion that never but never happened. happened. <laughs> never happened. Yeah. Totally. Now, from that point, right, yeah. to then where you got six clients in that one month, you know, I know we went on like a family vacation. We're now working on getting our marketing back up and going again, right? What would you say, what would you say were three things, right, that you changed between that time and then where you are now that allowed you to grow your business? Yeah, um, I think the first thing, which continues to evolve really, is um, the mindset, mm. um, which, you know, plays into my confidence level. So um, just believing in myself that I could do it. You know, you led us through developing our positive affirmations, digging into mm -hmm. deep work about ourselves and yeah. how we operate. Um, and so that was, that was really imperative, really eye opening to see how I operate and how I am my own obstacle, you know? Yeah. And so I was shocked with, and I still, I don't do it daily, but when I read over those affirmations, I mean, I put like, I try and do it at least once a week, but it Love is it. incredible. The immediate, like, hell yeah, I can do this. Exactly. You know? like, yeah. Pump up music in the background. And it is, it is just wonderful after you read over them enough to have them in your mind, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and without reading over them, be able to believe it and say it in those moments when you're like, ah, you know, cause we're gonna, we're gonna ebb and flow. Exactly. Yeah. So. You're gonna have those ebbs and flows, but I think what's really great about it is probably, and maybe this was your experience and you can tell me, but whenever you first start saying them, you don't really believe them that much. You're just kind of saying no. it, right? No. You're yeah. just kind of saying it. Well, and then one yeah. day it's like you suddenly start believing it and then you see the actual fruit of that in your life. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you're like, wow, this has made a huge difference, right? Yeah. I mean, hands down, it has. Not only in my business life, but in my, it, it spilled over into my mm. personal life. I love that, which Michelle. Is love yeah. That. Um, and then another thing was like the organizational piece. Mm. Um, I, I feel, I felt like I was organized, but it was like, I could brainstorm and get ideas, but never carry through with anything. And sure. so I think the organizational piece really helped me like chunk things down, you mm. know, and um, having that plan was really, was really helpful to follow. And I'm a, I'm a let me check off my list, you know? Sure. Um, so when I say organizational piece, it wasn't, I feel like I'm kind of combining organizational piece and the strategy you gave us, but yeah. I mean, you helped us like, cl not clear our calendar, but like take our calendar and be like, what's essential and what needs to go in it? Where can this, where can it fit? Mm -hmm. um, setting up those rhythms and routines, like, um, and even mapping out your daily schedule kind of you know like yeah how to how to end your day by being ready for tomorrow um just little things like that just just even if i didn't accomplish everything i wanted to i felt accomplished that day because i was still organized yeah. i knew what i had to tackle the next day um and yes, I think that, so that feeds was, into the mindset part too, because instead of feeling like I'm not moving forward at all, right? Yeah. We take the strategy and we're like, okay, what can make this manageable for the day? And then it's realistic, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. Those expectations. Yeah. It makes it realistic. It makes it so that you can actually achieve your goals rather than oh, here's this giant. Because I know a lot of people. I me too. I get into stuck in this big vision. I'm like, ooh, I love yeah. the vision. But then how do we yeah. bring the vision to life without the plan? <laughs> so. Yeah. Like for a moment, you can feel like you're there until you're like, oh, right. <laughs> Not yet. Not until these little steps. And so, yeah, that was really helpful, too, to keep me focused on the focus. You know what I mean? I think it's great. Um, 
Yeah. It was really cool. Awesome. Um, yeah. So then the third, third piece, I think, um, so now kind of moving into strategy, mm. like the way the modules were laid out and you were very clear in the beginning that you were like, don't progress to the next module if you have not done these steps. Yeah. Um, so that really, I had done training in the past where it was like, you were on to the next session before you really got a chance to complete, you know, this work that you just learned about. Yeah. So that was, I eventually just got lost in that, you know? And so this was very clear on the strategy. Mm. I could go at my own pace, but it was like, no matter, and this kind of leads into like being the mom, being a mom and having yeah. kids at the same time. It's like, no matter how much time I had, I knew what my next step was and um, what was essential for me to spend my time on. You know, there was stuff that I wanted to do because it was more fun. Right. But in order to grow my business, like, no, follow Natalie's steps. Like, <laughs> this is, it's working. And I could see it. You know, I could see, like, if I was doing what you suggested, I was like, yeah, okay, I can, I can see this working. Um, and then for like, if I had to take a break for some reason or couldn't spend as much time doing as what I wanted doing, I could see it back up again, which is fine. Like following your strategy gave me like, um, just this, uh, maybe like a sense of agency or just like an understanding that mm. I, I try, I know what I can do and I need to be okay when I can't do that much. And I, but giving me the confidence that once I can get back to doing more, I know what's going to happen, you know? So yeah. it gave me a sense of ownership. I think versus, that's great. Yeah. Versus before the training, it was like, huh, I don't know. You right. Know, uh, so it really... So I feel like it helped you understand, okay, here's what goes into getting clients instead of clients magically somehow appear at some point, mm -hmm. hopefully, right? Yeah. And to you yeah. felt like, okay, here's the system. I need to do the system. When I do the system, I get clients. Mm -hmm. If I have some stuff pop up, that's okay. I can always come back to the system. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yes. So like knowing taking full ownership of my choice to be like, I have, I've got more mom duties in the moment and that's okay. But, yeah. but once they, whatever, once I can get back to the business sure. stuff, like I know what to do and I know like, um, the self doubt wouldn't creep in. It was like, mm. no, I, I know I'm good and I know it'll, it'll, it'll grow or, you know, I'll be focused or. That's great, Michelle. I love yeah. it. I love it. Yeah. If you could talk a bit more, because I, I get this all the time, you know, even in uh, even in Grow Your Impact itself, right? And I don't have children myself, so I feel like I need to speak with you all, because you all will probably know better than me, because I don't have kids, right? I could give you my strategy, but I don't, <laughs> I don't have actual kids, right? And so <laughs> I told my mother about this, and my mom was like, I could record a module, Natalie. And I was like, all right, mom, maybe one. <laughs> maybe. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> but I thought I would love to hear from you yeah. with kind of what helped you with balancing, right? Would you call, and even you can say, I wouldn't call it balancing. You can call it whatever you would like to call it. But mm -hmm. being able to work on your business, this was an important thing for your life. But still, like you were saying, make sure that you're doing the duties that you need to do as a mom yeah. too, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I think it was, I think the biggest thing with like going through the training, mm -hmm. it really helped me see what was essential. You know, it helped me weed out non-essential activities mm -hmm. um, and really focus on, you know, my time is ridiculously limited so when I have a minute, sometimes it's, sometimes it's like 30, a 30 minute block, you know, and it's like, you can't yeah. really focus very well with that, but 
But now I know how freaking productive I can be in 30 minutes. I love it. Because I know what is uh, what is essential for right now. Mm. So, I mean, yeah, and this it, this past year was difficult because yeah, my kids were in school, but it was it was the pandemic, and so at any moment they were being quarantined, you know, and so sure, just the constant flexibility that had to happen. I think the only way, sure, I got discouraged, but the but that's that's okay. Discouraged because what I do is life giving, and I can't when I can't engage yeah. in these life giving things, you know. But um, it just it made the ability to be flexible. Like I could just I could roll with it because I knew I knew it was essential, and I could mm-hmm. handle. I could plug those in to whatever blocks of time I could find, you know. I think that's great. So it basically, instead of feeling like you had to do a bunch of different things, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. We realized, oh, there's only a couple that really matter. So when I do have time, I'm going to focus on that. Yeah. Yeah. Like when things in life got chaotic, you felt like, okay, well, that's all right. I just need to, these few little things I'll focus on and the rest of the stuff can just kind of wait. Yeah. And you know, like as a mom, um, that was so great because when I'm, when I'm momming, you know, when I'm in my mom mode, I want to be, I want to be present with my family. I want to be present with my kids. Mm -hmm. And I can't do that if I've got my to-do list, like rolling in the back of your head. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm so grateful for that. Like, Mm -hmm. um, being able to, to, to really pinpoint what's essential for me and then leaving it, oh, leaving the rest over here and being able to be present with my family was really, hmm. I mean, that was life-changing. That was really I think that's good. that's great. I love it. I love it. Where would you like to, so next steps, right? Where would you like to take this business in the future? Yeah, which I love that you ask that. Um and you're constantly encouraging us to grow because it's like when you talk to people about hiring others, I'm like, Oh, please, I'm not going to get there. You know, (laughs) do do I even want to like, this is my baby. I don't know. But for like immediate or um, just short term, I just, I'm so excited at the possibility of like making a bigger impact because it's, because it's groups, and mm-hmm. I, I don't know if this is a great answer to your question because I really any is. answer is a good answer, Michelle, because it's your business, it right? It is. You don't have to. Pro- you don't have to. Beca- Here's the thing: if you want to keep it like it is, you can, right? If you don't, exactly. if you don't, then I'm happy to help you grow it to be something else, right? Yeah. But I think that's the beauty of, and I think this is an important thing for everybody, is that we have to realize that success is determined by what we want. Yeah. You know? No, and you totally help us see that because, yeah, you just said, you know, if, if, um, if this is what I want, then that's fine. And I think that just hearing you say that, um, and even like in the training has just been so helpful. It's my, my daughter. It's okay. Fantastic. We're good. You're good. Oh, but it's just, um, yeah, I, I know I can grow super big or I can stay where I am. And so I think I'm kind of in the process of like, huh, what do I want this to yeah. look like? You know, because totally. I think for so long, I, I just been reaching reaching like come on this thing can grow right and now that I see that happening it's like Mm. oh huh okay where do I want to take this I'm still in the questioning phase I think I'm just currently so excited about the 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 group and wanting to grow that group and really like just create a fun community um I think it's gonna be so great I don't know (laughs) I think that's yeah. fine. I think that's fine. I, I think that sounds fantastic. Plus, growing a group is so, it's so wonderful. Like, I think about back when I first started and I was like, I want this community to be so great and everybody to be so supportive and then look at it now. I'm like, I love my community, right? Yeah, as do I. Yeah. Exactly. So it's yeah. just, it's, 
it's a fun thing. And I think that's so great. I think, I think all of us need to, and it doesn't matter if you have like goals that are massive or if you're like, you know, I just want to get here. Right. Yeah. And stabilize yeah. there. Both yeah. are great because what are we doing? We're doing what we want. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And yeah. And, and your, your, the training and the group, like it's helping us be more effective um, with what we currently do um, and more efficient with our time and getting more out of life, regardless of how big we want to get. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Okay. One last question and then we'll sum this yeah. up. All right. For someone who's just getting started or for someone who was in your position, right, back before you started, what's like yeah. one key tiny little piece of advice that you would give them? <laughs> interview, I said that I'm not very wordy, but it's like, oh gosh, you want me to be succinct with that? Maybe it's um, in regards to like, if they're thinking about training, like taking a training or just in general? I think in general, I, I realize it's a very broad question, you know, yeah. but I think with, maybe we should narrow it, right? What's one key mindset shift that you made, right? That you would give to somebody as a piece of advice when they're first starting? Mm -hmm. you know um I think to just enjoy the process does mm. that make sense but yeah I think that makes a lot of sense yeah stop aiming for perfection and just see the purpose in every every step every learning experience yeah so yes. enjoying the journey of it Right? Yeah. Instead of thinking to yourself, oh, well, today didn't turn out exactly the way that I wanted it to. Instead yeah. seeing this is an overall journey I'm enjoying every single step of the way. Yeah. Like, for sure. Enjoying the process and the journey because it's not just about your business. It's about you being a better human. <laughs> like, it's I, about agree. You. I agree. I agree. So, yeah. I yeah. think that's great, Michelle. Thank you so much. Thank you so much yeah. for doing this interview. All right. Yeah. And I hope everybody really enjoyed it as well.